So we're checking out the Sonoff Dual R3. And yeah, I know they probably want you to say S on off, but that's just cumbersome to say. And I always butcher names anyway, so we'll just stick with Sonoff like everybody else does. Now in a previous video, we did do a little build of a crazy thing, monstrosity, that Hydra deal with the Dual R2. And just don't pay any mind to the wires because at that time that's we had to build our own thing if we wanted this many buttons and status lights and motion sensors in the wall but you can see the size difference is much different and there's a few different things with the r3 on the way it hooks up to switches and we're going to cover all that and a special little surprise is really going to change things in this model as well so let's check it out and in full disclosure, Sonoff did send this for review, but as always, you know that's not going to impact the review. No, we're not going to need one of these to, it's, it'll be all right. So in the box, you're going to, of course, get the switch. And they do give you a little bracket that you, I guess, attach to the wall, and then it can snap in here some way. And, well, but we're not going to use that. Definitely would probably put that in a box, but maybe that's designed to go like in a breaker box or something like that. The, they do have the little instructions and do pay attention to the wiring diagram because that's one of the differences is it's much like the Shelly one and some of the other de Shelly devices where it uses mains power off of the switch inputs. So there is switch one and switch two up here. And so the design of it, you do not want to use one of these little buttons. Don't be stupid, don't be dumb, don't use one of these. I'm gonna say it again, do not do this. This button is designed for low voltage. It does not have the isolation that is required for mains voltage. So definitely don't endanger yourself or someone else with a low voltage button or switch or whatever. You're gonna wanna use a full mains power design switch and definitely use one for your country as well. This is a North America's Decora style switch. You can use another type of model that has multiple switches such as this one they do have models that have two switches in it because you know this has the two switch inputs and it's same deal it's designed for a one gang decora and it would handle your two switch inputs and it is designed for mains voltage now for the Sonoff Dual R3 if you want to go to the cloud do the ewe link app you really want to see how that's done, I guarantee you there's probably some other boring YouTube channels that'll show you how to put your stuff in the cloud. But that's not what we do here, right? So let's pop this guy open and get a close look at the inside of this switch. Now to open it up, it was pretty simple. There was no screws and you just had to take a little spudger. And I did on the side here. And you can see it just work yourself around and you can pop it right open. Just take your time. You don't want to break anything and pops right open. And then this pops right out. So we'll put those to the side. And this is the switch itself. So there are two relays on it. And this is what we want to look at even closer. And that's the little surprise there, the ESP32 DOWD. And this is the power monitoring chip that is somewhat based like the one you've seen in the Dual R2 and also the S31. It is a serial based power monitoring that attaches to the ESP chip. Now this one is dual channel. So yes, you will get two different power consumptions for Relay 1 and Relay 2. And as a recording of this video, Tasmoda does support this power monitoring chip in the development branch. And it does work. You'll see that shortly. Now this is the ESP little module here. And I want to take a closer look at the pads here. 
Now you'll notice right off the bat, there's 3.3 volts. That's definitely what we need to flash this guy. I did try the DIY mode and it doesn't seem to be supported this time, so you will need to serial flash this. There's the TX0 and RX0. You won't want to concern yourself with the TX2 and RX2. This is going to be your typical TX and RX lines that you're used to for flashing. They also have the ground here. If you really want to get crazy, you probably could put some clips on this little header here, but I would find it difficult to also push the button on the other side, which is GPIO zero. So just break down and solder. These aren't too bad to do, but do keep in mind that these are just pads. These are not through holes. So you do not want to rip those pads off. Now it wouldn't be the end of the world because then you still could find the pads in there, but you definitely wouldn't want to rip those off. So we'll solder one of these up for you and I'll show you a real quick tip on how to do that. Now what I'm using here on the table, you can use like some helping hands or just use some blue tack. Links down below. Definitely helps you and just sticks it right to the table. See, we'll put it right there in the frame and make it stick and call it a day. So these are just some little DuPont jumper wires. And basically what I do is just go ahead and cut off the ends and dispose of those. And we're only going to need four wires here. This is going to be the 3.3 volts. They'll use the ground, then the RX and TX, and typically you do need a fifth for GPIO zero, but the button on the actual switch itself, the one that pushes this right here, that one's actually GPIO zero, so thanks Sonoff for doing that. So what you wanna do is just take these and strip them back. You can use whatever, some little scissors, even sometimes your little fingernails, if you have nails, and get back enough. You don't need a whole lot. You can always cut that back once you do pre-tin the wires. It just go ahead and twist them. That way you don't have any hairs hanging out. Unlike me, he doesn't have any hair on his head. We'll be jealous of the wires, but... And then, simply, give him a bath. I give him a bath in flux. Flux is your friend in soldering, I can guarantee you that. You could be a very sucky solderer, but if you use Flux, you'll definitely make a difference. If you wanna do this and you don't know what to get, you know we'll always leave the links down in the description below. But basically all I'm gonna do is just put some solder on the end here. I do have this at 750 Fahrenheit. Basically, we want to heat up the wire and then allow the wire to get and suck up the solder. Don't need a whole lot on these. Do each one and do go all the way up to the jacket because if you do trim them, then you're not going to have to re-solder them. And if you have some wire that's been pre-done, definitely always re-solder it and add more to it because you don't know when it was done and it's oxidized and whatever else, it's just gonna be a pain. Okay, so on the sewn off itself, definitely wanna apply a little flux to it. If you wanna use a flux pen, go ahead. I'm just using a Q-tip with some flux on it and apply flux to the pad you'll be soldering to because you need to pretend those. So remember, we are trying to do the 3.3 volt pad. And basically you want to use and heat the pad up. Get a little ball of solder on there. Be careful on the pads here. I'm going to change angles here. You do want to make sure you don't bridge the TX0 and RX0 with the actual pads near them and we probably had too much caffeine today and we are shaking a little bit but we'll see if we can get it done probably looks worse than it is because i'm zoomed way in and pull it together and boom 
There we go, got the ground hooked up. Make sure it's not laying on those capacitors there. And then I'll work around. We'll do the 3.3 volt. I give it a little tug, not a lot, just give it a little tug. That way you know it's not going to pull off, you messing with it when you're flashing. Of course, this one we're not going to be doing any GPIO zero because that's the button on the other side. We'll definitely take a look at our wires, we're good to go. And if you're really worried about them pulling off, it's not a bad idea. Take some painter's tape or, this, I wouldn't use electrical tape, that's just too sticky. The painter's tape will pull right off. Put that on there, boom. If you look down in here, there's a button right here. This is the button that is the little pin that pushes off the case. There's a little pin that pushes down in the case and that's what pushes in there and you can use to reset things or whatever doing the cloud thing. Well, that's on GPIO zero. So all we need to do is, and I like to take something non-conductive. Typically I have like Q-tips around from doing things with flux. And so whatever, if you want to do like a wooden stick is don't use something metal. You might end up sliding off and I'll push that down. That way you're not touching your finger on the ESP and shorten things out. So use something non-conductive and we'll hook all these wires up to the TTL. So basically on your little USB TTL, we are going to make sure you're using the 3V3 pin, not the five volt. There's many different models of these and we've showed them in various other videos. Make sure yours is set on 3.3 volts. Do not use five volts. Some of them are by the pin, some of them are by jumpers, and we're just gonna hook up the 3V3 and ground. And do remember the RX goes to TX and TX goes to RX. And you may be wondering, why do we put things backwards? Well, this one is sending on TX, so this one needs to receive that on the RX pin then this TX needs to receive it on the receive pin. So that's why you flip things around. Now, I don't remember which one was which. You can probably roll back the video and see if I was wrong. And if I didn't get it right, just simply flip it around. You're not gonna hurt anything. You just won't flash it. We're gonna try out our little USB cable here. This one does support data and you can turn it on and off. Really cool because then you can hold GPIO zero without trying to need three hands. And no, that's not me from cleaning my ears, that's that yellow flux. Definitely don't try to use earwax for flux. I don't know, I never tried it. If you wanna try it, hey, let us know in the comments below, right? So we'll push the GPIO zero button and we'll give it a flick of the switch. All right, I heard the tone on the computer and we'll jump in and do the flashing of Tasmodo 32 with Bluetooth. So on the Tasmodo docks, if you take a look at the ESP32 section, you do need to download a couple of little things and there's various ways to do this. If you do want to use ESP tool, do follow the instructions on this document here. And of course, things may change, so we'll leave the link down below for the documentation because things evolve and get easier all the time. So definitely reference that to make sure things haven't changed. But if you want something a little easier, you can try the ESP flasher. No, at this time, Tasmatizer is not gonna work either. Now, as of the recording of this video, only the development branch has support for the power monitoring chip in the Sonoff Dual R3. So we will need to download the bin file that we're going to use. If you look here, you can find the pre-compiled development binaries from. Now you'll notice the only difference in the actual link. If it says release, that's going to be the standard release. We need the development binary that doesn't have release in the URL. So we'll click on that one. 
Now, if you don't want the Bluetooth part, you can just flash the regular Tasmoda 32 bin. And if you do change your mind, you can flash using OTA. So no big deal. You can change the bin file using the firmware GUI upgrade right on Tasmoda itself, just like you do with the ESP8266. So I want the Bluetooth stuff. I'm gonna have fun to play around. So we'll download the Bluetooth bin and we'll go ahead and snag the ESP flasher and we'll grab the one for Windows X64. If you're using whatever else, you can use ESP tool using those instructions there. We don't have our device turned on right now. If you hit the little refresh button and I don't show any COM ports and I'll go ahead and we'll turn that device on again. So we'll go ahead and hit the refresh and we should see our COM port. And the firmware, that's gonna be that Bluetooth bin file we downloaded. And pretty much it. Go ahead and hit flash ESP. Sure enough, there's our chip. And we're off to the races, erasing the flash. Now, once it flashes, I did find there's simply just not enough power for the device to get on the Wi-Fi and it continually wants to crash all the time. I've actually watched it in the serial log. So what you wanna do here at this point, once you have a successful flash, you can go ahead and if you don't wanna unsolder it, just be careful that do not touch those wires while you have it connected to mains. Go ahead and connect it to mains because we need to get full power to the ESP32 to get on the Wi-Fi, bring up Wi-Fi, which is probably too much power draw for most USB flashers. So for their quick little wiring here, if you haven't seen this, it's the little cliff quick test that basically when you close the door, it energizes these wires. It does have a fuse. It keeps your fingers out of things and stops you from making little suicide cords. It's not hot right now. Of course, we have the Sonoff Dual R3. The hot line comes over here. It feeds LN. And then remember, these two are connected together continuity. So we have to feed mains power to the actual little switch. This is just a single pole switch, rocker back and forth to Cora. And then the mains power is on the red. Whenever this switch is toggled, it will feed mains to S1. So if you do do S2, of course you'd have another switch there, which you would need another mains power, but you could use like a Wagos or something like that. So then we have the neutral here. So that comes off of here and then we got to feed neutral over to the power plug. And then off of here, we have a standard old school incandescent 60 watt bulb that I use for power monitoring calibrations. So it's a constant power load. So then we have the L out one, which is relay one, ties to the plug, boom, we'll push the button and then you'll get power over there and we'll see the power monitoring. So once you get into Tasmoda itself, now we did flash the Bluetooth version. So you will see this up here showing that we have zero sensors. And we do have a couple Bluetooth sensors that we did in a previous live stream. Those ATC Xiaomi flashed and no, there's no soldering. If you want to check that live stream out, you can look in the video description as well as you'll find those little thermometers. They're pretty cool little Bluetooth thermometers and you just connect them Bluetooth and you just connect to the web on it and flash them. No soldering, pretty cool. Now, first we need to grab the template for this and I'll leave the template down in the video description as well as the blog post for this video. And what you'll do is go to configuration and configure other. I like to go ahead and delete the entire field and then I'll paste in my template and then make sure you do check the activate box. So once you put your template in, make sure the check box is activated hit save. So once it's rebooted, you should see the two relays and you'll notice you get two channels of power monitoring. Pretty cool stuff. We'll go ahead and we'll definitely try the GUI. Remember we do have our 60 watt light bulb and there's the GUI updated showing 62 watts, pretty close. 
If you do want to tweak that, of course, you can do the power monitoring calibrations. Now we'll go ahead and try the actual switch. And do be careful if you have a little test setup like this because you know there is mains power. So we'll push the switch. And it turned off the light. And you can see right there on the GUI, it is off. Now the GUI does go a little slower on the updates. So let's go ahead and jump into the console. And you can see it's pretty quick. Turned it off. And there is on. And there is off. Now, let's do the Bluetooth test real quick. Now, in the documentation for the actual Bluetooth, there is a set option. 115. If you do SO115 space 1, that will turn on BLE. You should see it saying like starting nimble or whatever it might be. Now you can automatically see it's picked up one of my sensors. Let's go ahead and take a jump into the main menu and actually it's picked up both sensors and showing the RSSI, temperature, humidity, dew point, the battery, the whole nine yards right there from those little sensors. And you can see we can still use the Sonoff R3 as our switch. Everything still works the same. Turn it off with the switch, turns off, it updates. And if you do want to look at the console, you can see these sensors as well in the actual telemetry sensor MQTT topic. You can see the actual sensor name, the MAC ID, temperature, humidity, it's all in JSON. So if you wanna pull that out, so pretty cool that you have all your power monitoring, you can do all your sensors, et cetera. And of course, I'm sure there's gonna be much more development on the Bluetooth stuff in the ESP32. So pretty cool little switch, especially throwing Tasmoto on it. You can get that Bluetooth scanning, do whatever little sensors or eye beacons you wanna pick up, doing different automations, pretty cool. Plus you get that power consumption and the switch inputs. All straight, meant to be in the wall, unlike that other one. And if you want to purchase one for yourself or you just want to use the affiliate links down below for whatever type of purchases, yep, they're down below and I do appreciate it. And I do appreciate all the Patreon subscribers. It definitely helps things and new equipment and whatever it may be. Thank you. And before you jet, you give us a like, dislike, or a comment, or whatever it may be, or all of the above. It definitely helps things out. And yeah, you probably are a subscriber, right? But if you're not, Smash that button and y'all take care.